the end of day five, the heat pump installation is completed and um, everything's working nicely. Let's have a look at the components that uh, make up our system. So here's the heat pump and it's operating. Um, I think it is going full pelt at the moment doing a hot water cycle. Uh, so it's producing plenty of hot water to heat our, our mixergy tank. Um, around the back we have these um, anti-icing valves that um, protect the heat pump should, it, um, should the water in the pipes freeze, which seems unlikely, but it is possible. Um, you can see that we've um, decorated the, um, the front of the heat pump base with some stones that we collected from Sidmouth Beach uh, this summer. So my little lad and I found some interesting looking stones to liven up the base here. And um, the heat pump is running pretty hard, but um, it's not making much noise, that's for sure. It's pretty quiet. Um, so that's good. Um, up here you can see the um, the AC isolator, this is from Skarme, and um, uh, they produce an AC isolator that is black and grey rather than the usual red and yellow. And I think aesthetically, you know, in a home, it's nicer to have this uh, black grey um, rather than the rather garish um, red and yellow. Um, now that the heat pump's here, um, it's easy, it's, it's, it seems a little more uh, intuitive as to what it's, how it's working. Um, when you read that the, the heat pump does 300 to 400% efficiency, you think that must be magic. How is that possibly working? But um, when you're here in front of it um, and it's running, you can put your hand in front of this with a fan here and feel that the air coming out is noticeably co cooler than, uh, than the surrounding air. I mean, it's, it's a pretty chilly day this morning anyway, but nevertheless, the air coming out of there is freezing. So you really get a sense of, of the thing taking the heat out of the ambient air and sending it into your home. It's quite impressive to uh, really give you more of, a, more of a sense as to what's actually happening. So this is the glamorous north face of our, uh, of our house. Um, basically an alley between one house and the next, which we don't use, well, aside from storing the obligatory plastic garden chairs. Um, I swear I will get to the fixing this uh, fence at some point. Uh, but up here we have our, um, this is our outdoor um, temperature sensor and um, probably humidity as well. And um, this feeds back to the um, to the system um, the outside temperature, such that the uh, heat pump can be um, can be told how much energy to put into the building. So it's essentially like having um, it's essentially that you don't have a thermostat inside the house, and the a uh, system drives the output from the heat pump based on the temperature outside. It's called weather compensation. And um, uh, it results in a, uh, apparently a more comfortable, um, uh, more stable internal temperature in the, in the, in the house. And, uh, the temp and the heat pump is able to adapt its, um, its output based on, on the temperature outside. So it's a very different way of looking at uh, how you um, how you um, um, manage the temperature in your home but we'll see how it goes um, I like this one because it is um, it's wireless so you just screw it to the wall and it's also got a little solar panel that provides um, power um, rather than having to get up there and uh, put batteries in so should be should be good should work well for us I think here in our hall, we have a couple of devices for uh, 
looking after the heat pump. Um, the first at the top there is the um, Valent Senso Comfort controller. I think it's a 720. And as you can see, in normal operation, it's kind of off, or at least looks off. Um, I think it's monitoring the internal temperature and sending that back to the to the heat pump controller. But um, it uh, has an interface that lets you control all the, the settings of the heat pump and what have you. Um, in real terms, it's probably a little redundant because most of the day-to-day -day controls and monitoring and what have you will be done on the app. So we don't have to uh, actually come and stand here and look at this. It will just continue to do its thing. There are um, various options in here to uh, control the settings and what have you. But, um, but for the most part, we can we can leave that alone, I think. Um, you can see all the settings and what have you. Which I think for the most part, we'll leave alone. And you can see at the, at the moment we're the temperature that we're asking for is, is 21 degrees and the current temperature according to the device is 21 and a half so we're doing okay um, and now we just, it's uh, six degrees outside the, de the device below this rather anonymous looking white square is a, um, a similar temperature and humidity monitor this is for the open energy monitor and uh, its job is to report back a sort of unbiased um, view of the temperature in the house. And then um, we can use that to, uh, to, to show how well the heat pump is performing and produce stats that are, um, are exact. Here's the completed uh, airing cupboard with uh, all of the new pipe work and uh, bits and pieces for the for the heat pump. Um, the back here we can see our Mixer G hot water tank which we've had for some time. Uh, it features a solar diverter for harvesting um, spare electricity from our solar panels. Um, it's a 150 litre tank and it's the, the narrow version rather than a rather than the big huge fat tall the fat ones that they do. Um, uh, we've added the uh, heat pump interface to allow the Mixer-G to call for uh, heat from the, um, from the heat pump. Um, and also added to the, uh, the Mixer-G is this, which is the uh, heat pump kit. What you're seeing there is this is a um, plate heat exchanger that means the the water coming from the heat pump uh, doesn't mix with the water in the tank instead it just transfers the um, heat energy into the into the tank and um, there's a small pump down here that runs the mixergy side of the um, of the uh, heat exchanger plate heat exchanger and um, it's that that allows that the, the um, the mixed G tank to heat really quite quickly and very efficiently from the um, the water that's coming from the uh, from the heat pump. Um, over here we have uh, the controls. These are, should be quite familiar to anyone considering a, a Valent heat pump. And down here we have the My Valent Connect device that, um, that allows us to uh, to manage the heat pump uh, with an app. Um, in the middle here is the diverter valve from uh, SB. This is a um, quite a high quality item that allows very high um, throughput of, uh, of water. Um, I'm led to believe that the Honeywell ones that are normally used are don't have a particularly good flow rate We've got a, a seven kilowatt heat pump, so it's important for us to to get um, to get all that energy through the system as quickly as we can, and, and then achieve a nice 
high flow rate. Uh, so this is the primary flow from the uh, from the heat pump, and then it goes this way when it's doing direct hot water, and then it goes this way when it's heating the radiators. And rather counterintuitively, I'm afraid the um, the indicator on the valve points the wrong way. So presently it's doing hot water. Presently it's doing heating. If it goes over here, then it's doing hot water. Never mind. Um, down here is the uh, gear for the open energy monitor. Now this needs a bit more tidying, which is probably going to come down to me, I should think. So at some point I will tidy up these items. Um, this is the uh, primary um, heat meter and flow meter for the, for the, uh, for the primary flow. And here we have the um, the um, the Emon Pi Two and various interfaces and what have you that um, are collecting information from the um, from the electricity meter, which is down in the consumer unit that has been installed for the heat pump, and um, then we have a the direct hot water sensor over there. All of these things have been installed and seem to be working nicely. That's good news. Um, but as I say, it just needs a bit of tidying up with some cable ties and uh, some other bits and pieces to make it look neat. Now, uh, I know you guys are thrill seekers, so would you like to see what happens when I ask the Mixergy to um, do a hot water cycle to essentially boost the, um, the tank uh, using the heat pump, and we have controls on the mixture here. You can see that it's, it's almost 80% full already. Um, but if I press the up arrow, it should switch to asking for heat from the heat pump. Right. So you can see that the, uh, the lights have lit up. Um, they are green, although that might be difficult to see on the image. And now what's happening is the um, the pump circulation pump down here has come on for the plate heat exchanger and very slowly, I know you're thrill seekers, you can see that the diverter valve is switching from heating the radiators to uh, doing the, um, the hot water. And the ESB valves are rather more gentle I think than the Honeywell ones they just flick instantly between um, between the inputs uh, and there we go so now we have a, a little bit of a hum as the, as the pump here runs takes the cold water from inside the mixture G and passes it through the heat exchanger mixing it or heating it from the water that's coming from the heat pump and um, and this um, tank probably takes about 45 minutes, perhaps an hour to heat from cold. Um, but of course, most of the time we're just topping up um, the heat that's already in the tank. Uh, so it works pretty well. Um, uh, you might be able to see here that we're getting quite a decent flow rate. Um, from the heat pump so that's 1200 liters per hour so it's been a couple of days since the uh, heat pump installation was completed and um, things have been running well uh, the um, hot water heats in no time the um, uh, the house is comfortably warm um, I suspect we've still got Option. We've still got plenty of um, tweaks to do to uh, to make sure that everything is exactly as, as we like it. But there are loads of different options that you can uh, you can tinker with in the in the controls. Um, frankly, I'm not the sort to do that sort of thing. I want um, to do that, figure it out, and then leave it alone. I'm pleased with the installation that uh, that Darren and Adam did from the um, Smart Boiler Company. Uh, they're based in Warsaw in the UK, so if you have any uh, needs for um, a heat pump uh, in the West Midlands area, I've, I've no um, no hesitation recommending 
um, Darren and his guys. They did um, an excellent job. Um, system works as advertised. Um, they were very clean and tidy in their work and, um, you know, punctual, pleasant, um, good to work with. So very happy to, to recommend those guys and, um, and do it through the heat, heat geek umbrella really, um, is the, would be my advice. Then you've got, um, heat geek there as a, a second pair of eyes to look over the design and make sure that, um, that what's being proposed is, uh, is going to work and obviously do the paperwork around the MCS and the boiler upgrade scheme grant and sort out all those, um, all those other bits and pieces. So, so far so good. Um, we will be um, hoping to be publishing the um, open energy monitor data on the heat pump site. So perhaps you'll be able to see how we're doing. Um, my plan is to is to run the system uh, for our comfort, um, rather than to be chasing, um, you know, super efficiency and all that stuff. Um, I want it to be a, uh, a warm, a, um, warm home where we're all happy and uh, we have plenty of hot water. So, so yeah, let's see how it goes and I'll report back in um, you know, probably a few weeks, see how it goes. Um, it's early December uh, 2024, so perhaps I'll come back to you um, after Christmas and the new year and uh, we'll see where we are. Okay, thank you.